You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. In 2001, then Australian captain Steve Waugh referred to India as the last frontier. For Australian test teams, playing and winning a test series in India is a great achievement. Since 1956, Australia have just won four test series in India. In 1956, 1959, 1969 and 2004. During this four-part series for the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast Historical Series, we are looking back at Australia's four Test Series wins in India. How the captains of Ian Johnson, 1956, Richie Benno, 1959, Bill Laurie, 1969, and Adam Gilchrist, 2004, led their respected sides, and how all the players bonded together to contribute to these four Test Series wins. In part one, we look back at Australia's maiden Test Series win in 1956, where Australian captain Ian Johnson led his side to victory. Before we delve into Australia's maiden Test Series win in 1956, let's look back at how the Australia and India rivalry started in Test Cricket. Australia and India played their first ever Test Series back in 1947-48, The series was held in Australia. Australia won the series 4-0 on the best of five. Australia were the stronger team, featuring some of Australian Test cricket's greatest players. So Donald Bradman, Keith Miller, Arthur Morris, Neil Harvey and Ray Linwall, just to name a few. India were just starting out in Test cricket. Having entered Test cricket in 1932, they couldn't compete with Australia and this was reflective in the results. The first test at the Gabba, Australia won by an innings and 226 runs. So Donald Bradman scored 185 and Australia's eight declared for 382 in their first innings. And India were bowled out for 98 and 58. The second test at the SCG ended in a draw. India's batting improved slightly from the first test, scoring 188 all out and 7 for 61. Also, they managed to bowl Australia out for 107. The third test at the MCG, Australia won by 223 runs. Bradman scored 132 in Australia's 394 all out in the first innings. Vinu Madcad, whose name is associated with the controversial run out of the non striker, where in this series, He ran out Australian opener Bill Brown at the SCG. Madcad went on to score India's first century of the series, 116 in the first innings. The fourth test at the Adelaide Oval, Australia won by an innings and 16 runs. Bradman scored 201, and Victorian batsman Lindsay Hassard backed Bradman up, scoring 198 in Australia's first innings of 674 all out. Also, a young Neil Harvey made his test debut for Australia. India were bowled out for 277 and 381, but Indian batsman Vijay Hazar scored back-to-back centuries, 116 and 145. The fifth test at the MCG, Australia won by an innings and 177 runs. Neil Harvey, in his second test, scored his maiden test century, 153 in Australia's first innings of 8 declared for 575. India were bowled out for 67 and 331, but Vinu Madcad brought up his second 100, scoring 111 in the first innings. Since 1947-48, the rivalry between Australia and India in Test cricket has become one of cricket's great rivalries. The two teams have produced some of Test cricket's greatest moments. The Thai Test in 1986, Kolkata 2001, and Brisbane 2020-21. Also, they've produced some of world cricket's greatest batsmen and bowlers. Ricky Ponning, Sachin Tendulkar, Shane Warne, and Anil Kumble. 
Up until 1991, Australia and India didn't have a perpetual trophy to play for. So for the 1996 series in India, the BCCI and Cricket Australia decided to create a trophy and the Border Gavaskar Trophy was born. Named after two of cricket's greatest batsmen in Alan Border and Sunil Gavaskar, over 76 years of test cricket between Australia and India continues to amaze us. What will these teams bring us over the next 76 years? The 1956 test tour to Pakistan and India was a tour full of firsts for Australia. The only test against Pakistan was the first official test between the countries. The test series in India was only the second test series played between the two countries and the first series in India. But Australia's test tour to Pakistan and India nearly didn't happen. The Australian players were less enthusiastic about touring Pakistan and India. This lack of enthusiasm was also shared by the Australian Board of Control for International Cricket. The board wasn't keen on encouraging new test countries unlike their English counterparts. India came into test cricket in 1932, playing their inaugural test against England at Lords. India and England played nine test matches over the next 14 years. On the other hand, Australia played 74 consecutive test matches against England before playing a test against South Africa in 1902. It was 28 years and 123 tests before Australia played the West Indies in a test. Then in 1947, Australia invited India to play a five test series, which India lost 4-0. India up until this test series against Australia in 1947 had not played an official test against a country other than England. It took the Australian Board of Control for International Cricket a decade before they agreed to tour India following the 1956 Ashes and a one-off test against Pakistan. What made the ABCIC change their minds to tour India back in 1956 was down to the then Australian Prime Minister Sir Robert Menzies. Sir Robert Menzies was Australia's longest serving Prime Minister from 1949 to 1966 and was an avid cricket lover. Menzies had been putting pressure on the ABC IC to establish stronger cricketing ties with Commonwealth countries, in particular with Pakistan and India. Menzies thought that cricket was a good way for Australia to build relationships within the Commonwealth community of countries. Menzies sent a letter to the ABCIC in 1955. In the letter, he asked the board to reconsider their rejection of India's 1953 request for a tour. The 1956 Ashes series was locked in, but it was a late decision from the board to incorporate the test tour to Pakistan and India. The Australian players' lack of enthusiasm for the tour to Pakistan and India was understandable. Australia had just completed the 1956 Ashes, a campaign which was unsuccessful. Australia lost the series 2-1 in the best of five, and England retained the Ashes for the third straight series. Australia were humiliated in the fourth test of the series at Old Trafford. That test is best remembered by Jim Laker, taking 19 wickets, 9 for 37 and 10 for 53. Australia lost by an innings and 170 runs and were bowled out for 205 and 84. So you could understand why some of the players within the Australian touring squad weren't keen on going to Pakistan and India and just wanted to go home. It was deemed that there wasn't enough time for the Australian players to go home and then go back to Pakistan and India. Commercial air services were still a new thing and travelling by ship was still the norm for long distance transport. So, with some time to kill and a month before embarking on their tour to Pakistan and India, the Australian players were left to their own devices to explore Europe. Before reassembling in Rome, Italy, for departure on October the 8th to Pakistan, most people will be attractive to having a month's holiday in Europe, but all the Australian players were amateurs, and many of the players felt the financial pressure, as they weren't earning money during this month's break. The Australian players received a touring fee of £1,000 for the eight-month trip of England, Pakistan and India, which compared to the pretty poorly average annual income in Australia at the time of £1,675. 
So the Australian team were ready to embark on their tour of Pakistan and India, which saw Australia play a one-off test against Pakistan at Karachi on October the 11th to the 17th, then a three-test match series against India between October and November of 1956. The Australian test squad that was selected for the tour of Pakistan and India was a squad full of experience and some inexperienced players. Also, this squad spent just over three months while in England for the 1956 Ashes, so the squad had enough time to gel together. The squad also boasted some of Australian cricket's great players, Richie Benno, who became one of Australian cricket's great captains and all-rounders, and this tour to Pakistan and India was the turning point in Benno's test career. Neil Harvey, who became one of Australia's great test batsmen, Alan Davidson, one of Australian cricket's great all-rounders, and a very talented left-arm fast bowler who took 186 test wickets at an average of 20 and a half. Ray Linwall, one of Australia's all-time great fast bowlers. Keith Miller, the second World War fighter pilot, became one of Australia's great test players, talented with both bat and ball. So for Captain Ian Johnson, he had a squad that was more than capable of winning the test matches against Pakistan and India. The squads selected for the test tour to Pakistan and India were as follows. Ian Johnson, captain. Ron Archer. Richie Benno. Peter Burge. Ian Craig. Pat Crawford. Alan Davidson. Neil Harvey. Gil Langley, wicketkeeper. Ray Linwell. Ken Mackay. Len Maddox, wicketkeeper. Colin McDonald. Keith Miller, John Rutherford, and Jack Wilson. After spending a month's break in Europe, the Australian team arrived in Pakistan and landed at Karachi in October of 1956. The only test match between Pakistan and Australia was scheduled for October the 11th to the 17th in Karachi at the National Stadium. The tourists were about to receive a shock when they saw the pitch for the test match. The pitch wasn't a typical turf wicket, but a matted pitch, approximately 50 metres in length and covering the width for the wicket. The coarse fibre stretched 15 metres past the stumps at either end to protect the grass that had been nursed back to health under Karachi's extreme heat. Matting pitches were a common sight in Australian parks and country towns, but the tourists were completely out of their depth. Australia's flight from Rome to Karachi was delayed, and the tourists arrived just two days before the test was due to start, which meant Australia had limited preparation time to get accustomed to conditions, and especially getting used to playing on the matting. So hours after they arrived, Australia conducted their first and only pre-test training session on the matting. Ray Linwall and Keith Miller experimented with new boots, which the traditional metal spikes were swapped for rubber soles with leather tips to prevent the soles from being torn loose by the coarse matting surface. With this being Australia's first tour to the subcontinent, no one had any experience of playing in these conditions. The only one who boasted some experience in these conditions was Keith Miller. He represented an Australian services team in India in 1945, and he played a match to raise flood relief funds in Pakistan a decade later. But even the great Miller didn't know how to handle the matting. With their limited preparation on the matting, that was reflective on how Australia played the test. Pakistan crushed Australia in a dominant performance, winning by nine wickets in the inaugural test between the countries. Australia batted first and were all at sea on the mat and were bowled out for 80 in the first innings. Keith Miller top scored with 21, one of four to score double figures. It was the police superintendent Fuzzle Mahmood, who did the damage, taking 6 for 34 and 27 overs. His accurate length and varying his swing with a mixture of leg cutters bamboozled Australia. His partner in crime, Khan Mohammed, backed him up, taking 4 for 43 and 26.1 overs. Him and Mahmood were the only two bowlers used by Pakistan. Pakistan scored 199 all out in their first innings, claiming a lead of 199 runs. Pakistan lost 5 for 70 before Captain Abdul Qadir and Wazin Mohammed 
combined for a 104-run partnership, and although the tail collapsed for Pakistan, that partnership was enough for Pakistan to gain a substantial lead. Australian captain Ian Johnson took 450 from 20.3 overs and was the pick of the bowlers. Ursa Ray Linwall claimed his 200th test wicket. Australia produced a better batting performance in their second innings, scoring 187 all out. Australia were able to set Pakistan a target to win, but not a substantial target of just 69. Richie Benno top scored with 56 and shared a nice six wicket partnership of 64 with Ron Archer. Fazal Mahmood did the damage again, like he did in the first innings, taking 7 for 80 in 48 overs, and took match figures of 13 for 114. Also, Khan Mohammed took 3 for 69 from 40.5 overs. Pakistan chased the target of 69 down with ease. So Australia's first experience in Pakistan wasn't an experience to remember. With their confidence dented, Australia hoped for better results in India. After the only test against Pakistan at Karachi, the test match finished on October the 17th, and the Australians flew straight to India the next day, as the first test at Madras was due to start on October the 19th. The first test of the three-match series took place at the Corporation Stadium in Madras, now known as Chennai. The Australian fast bowling attack was extremely weakened due to injuries. Keith Miller, Alan Davidson and Ron Archer all suffered injuries and were ruled out. For Miller and Archer, who both suffered knee injuries on the matting at Karachi, never played Test cricket again. For Miller, he was at the end of his long illustrious career, but it was a big blow for 23-year-old Archer, who was seen as the long-term replacement for Miller. India's captain, Polly Urigma, won the toss and chose to bat first. And looking to score a big first innings total, and looking to put Australia's weakened pace attack under pressure. Unfortunately for India, that didn't eventuate. They were bowled out for 161. A cautious batting approach was India's undoing. Despite a weakened bowling attack, Australia did well. Linwall and Pat Crawford, who made his test debut in the 1956 Ashes Test at Lords, opened the bowling. They were nicely supported by the medium pace of Ken Mackay and the off-spin of Captain Ian Johnson. With injuries whittling the Australian attack, they didn't want another. Linwall had a stomach complaint and retired after just bowling five overs. Despite this, young leg-spinning all-rounder Richie Benno was the pick of the bowlers, taking 7 for 72. Up until this test at Madras, Benno played 25 tests since his debut in 1952, and hadn't taken a five-wicket haul. Benno made a change to his bowling run-up following the Karachi test. He cut his run in half, from 12 paces to 6 paces, as a consequence of the extreme heat and humidity. Then, he also changed his straight run-up to an angle run. He first used the new run in this Madras test, and then proceeded to use it for the remainder of his career. It's worth noting that Benno took 50 wickets at an average of around 35 prior to the change in run-up. Following it, he took nearly 198 wickets in 39 tests at an average of 25. In reply to India's first innings, Australia scored 319 all out. Captain Ian Johnson top scored with 73, batting at number 9. The Australian batsmen struggled on this slow pitch, as quick run scoring wasn't conducive on this Madras surface. This slow scoring was to continue throughout the series. India's first innings run rate was 1.6 runs per over. Australia bettered that with 2.37 runs per over, but were kept quiet by the Indian spinners of Shabhash Gupti, who took 3 for 89, and Vidu Madkad, who took 4 for 90. The innings from Johnson turned out to be a significant one, as he guided Australia from a precarious lead of 39 with 7 wickets down, to a lead of nearly 160. Also partnerships from Pat Crawford, 87, for the ninth wicket, and a useful last wicket partnership from wicketkeeper Gil Langley helped Johnson to steer Australia to a commanding position. India struggled in their second innings and were bowled out for 153, to lose the test by an innings in five runs. 
After going off the field with a stomach complaint in the first innings, Ray Linwell did the damage for Australia with the ball, taking 7 for 43. To help Australia to victory with over a day to spare, with limited playing experience in India and coming from Pakistan playing on a matted pitch and limited preparation time before this series in India and their main pace attack injured, Australia did well to win the first test. After winning the first test, Australia would have been looking forward to the second test. The second test of the series was played at the Brabant Stadium in Bombay, now known as Mumbai. Australia had a new captain for this test. Ray Linwall captain Australia for the first and only time. Captain Ian Johnson was ruled out with injury and further depleting Australia's bowling attack. Australia decided to play two debutantes for the second test. 35-year-old Jack Wilson who was a left-arm spinner who bowled near-medium pace. Wilson took match figures of 1 for 64 for the test and never played test cricket again for Australia. The other debutante was Western Australian batsman John Rutherford, who became the first Western Australian to be selected for a major test tour. He opened the batting and scored 30 in Australia's first innings. He, like Wilson, never played test cricket again. Comments made at the time from the tourists that both Wilson and Rutherford were given a token test cap as a reward for their participation in the extended tour. Indian captain Polly Rigma won the toss again and chose to bat first. India's batting improved from the first test as the hosts scored 251 all out in their first innings. India were 2 for 18 early on in their innings, but VJ Mandraker, who scored 55, and a century from Gulbarli Ramchan of 109, guided India out of trouble. Like in the first test, run scoring was a grind, and India scored 169 runs on day one. The Australian pace attack gained some assistance from the pitch in the first innings. Ken Mackay was Australia's best bowler, taking 3 for 27 off 14 overs, he was supported well by Pat Crawford, who took three for 28. He had to leave the field with a muscular injury. The Indian total could have been less if Crawford stayed on. Australia replied to India's first inning score with an imposing total of 7 for 523 declared, with a 272 run lead. Centuries from Jim Burke, 161, and Neil Harvey, 140, and a 204 run stand between them which lasted just over four hours, powered Australia to a commanding position in the Test match. Harvey's 140 captivated the Bombay crowd. When he scored his century, a number of youths scaled the six-foot fence around the Brabon Stadium, ran to the wicket, and draped Harvey in a garland of flowers. He hit 18 fours and scored his runs in 73 overs. After Harvey left to a missed time pull shot, Burke was joined by Peter Burge, and carried on the pressure to the Indian attack, combining for a stand of 137. Australia's first innings didn't finish until midway through day four. India needed to bat out 137 overs for a draw. When Richie Benno dismissed Vinu Madcad for 31, India was struggling, but India managed to hold on and finish on, five for 250 to draw the test. Key innings from Panke Roy, 70, and Captain Polly Rigma, 79, got India over the line. Urigma's innings was of intense concentration, which proved to be a crucial innings for his team. While the scores from this test indicate that the pitch was a flat and lifeless surface, the Indian batsmen did well to avoid defeat. Reports at the time indicated that every ball was bringing up a puff of dust on the final day. Australia still maintained a 1-0 series lead, and a win in the third test would secure the series. After losing by an innings and five runs in the first test, India had an opportunity to draw the series, but it was all to play for when the two teams headed to Kolkata for the third and final test of the series. Third and final test of the India tour for Australia took place at Eden Gardens, Kolkata. The teams had little rest or preparation time for this third test. The third test started just two days after the end of the second test. The three test matches took place over a period of 19 days, and when you include the one-off test against Pakistan, 
Australia played four tests in extreme heat in less than four weeks. Polly Eurigma won the toss again and decided to change tactics and decided to put Australia in on a difficult Eden Garden surface. The talk at the time was that the field had been flooded prior to the test and the pitch turned square from day one. Richie Benno described the pitch as being impossible. 35 of the 39 wickets fell to slow bowlers. Urugma's change in tactics worked as Australia were bowled out for 177 in the first innings. Peter Burge was the only batsman to score 50. Having not played in the previous test, Indian off-spinner Ghulam Ahmed took 7 for 49 and fellow spinners Gupti and Madcad combined to take the last three wickets of the innings. India failed to capitalise on their advantage of bowling Australia out for under 200. Their batsmen struggled on this surface and were bowled out for 136. Richie Benno continued his improvement as a leg spinner. His leg spinners were biting off the surface and he claimed his second five wicket haul of 6 for 52 to back up the 7 for 72 from the first test. The pitch wasn't getting better with time. Australia did well to reach 9 for 189 declared, setting India 231 runs to win. Neil Harvey top scored with 69. He batted for three precious hours and four scores in the 20s by Peter Burge, Ken Mackay, Benno and Ray Linwall helped Harvey. The Indian spinners did the damage again. Vinu Madcad took 449. Galum Al Ahmed took 3 for 81, and Gupti took 1 for 24. It was going to be a challenge for India to chase 231, given how difficult the surface was, and it was turning square. India scored steadily until lunch, when the total was 2 for 74. But the target was well beyond India, and they were dismissed for 136, exactly the same as their first innings. Benno, like in the first innings, was the main destroyer for Australia, picking up 5 for 53, his second five-wicket haul for the test and third of the series. He was well supported by the part-time off-spin of Jimmy Burke, who took 4 for 37. Benno and Burke brought a speedy end to the game. Benno claimed match figures of 11 for 105. The test finished in three days, with Australia winning by 94 runs and the series 2-0. So Australia's time in India came to a close. After eight months after departing Fremantle on the ship SS Himalaya for England for the 1956 Ashes, Australia left India and flew back on a Qantas flight back to Australia. You would think that this historic test tour to Pakistan and India would be spoken highly from the Australian players. But for some of the players, they didn't speak of this tour very highly. Australian captain Ian Johnson, in his 1957 book Cricket at the Crossroads, barely mentioned India, with his book focusing mainly on the 1956 Ashes. Alan Davidson's autobiography Fifteen Paces only made one brief mention to the tour. Ken Slasher Mackay and Neil Harvey both spent more time describing the following tour to India in 1959. Ray Linwall spoke about his one and only test as test captain and how hard it was to manage a very undermanned bowling attack due to injury. When Richie Benno described the 1956 series in India, he probably made the most distinct and accurate summary of the tour. When Benno in the book Willow Patterns, when he noted, this 1956 series in India consisting of only three tests, produced remarkably little attractive cricket. So Australia's f first test tour to India would have appeared to have been completely discounted by many of the Australian players, and history has overlooked it. Benno's summary of the tour was justified. The cricket in this 1956 series wasn't scintillating, with a run rate that generally hovered between one and a half and two runs per over. Despite that, this 1956 test tour to India was the making of some Australian players, like Richie Benno, who had a great series, taking 23 wickets with three five-wicket hauls, and he was the leading wicket-taker for the series. The 
the change of run-up and using an angled approach to the crease instead of a straight one helped Benno from a useful contributor with the ball into a match winner. He didn't know it then, but Benno would become captain of Australia and lead Australia to their second Test Series win in India in 1959. This 1956 tour to Pakistan and India signalled the end of some players' test careers. Seven members of the 1956 squad didn't play test cricket again. They included Captain Ian Johnson, Keith Miller, wicketkeeper Gil Langley, Jack Wilson, John Rutherford, wicketkeeper Len Maddox and Ron Archer. This 1956 test tour to Pakistan and India for Australia presented lots of challenges but Australia were able to conquer those challenges and win. If you combine the one-off tests in Pakistan and the three tests against India, Australia played four tests, won two, lost one, and drawn one, which is a good result considering Australia had never played a test in the subcontinent. Australia were able to win again in India three years later in 1959 when new captain Richie Benno led the team. Hi everyone, hope you enjoyed part one of our historical series, looking back at Australia's Test Series wins in India, back in 1956. Stay tuned for part two, where we look at Australia's 1959 Test Series win in India, where Captain Richie Benno led his side to victory.